Hey, what's going on YouTube? Okay, so I figured today that I'd make me a video uh, since I haven't made one in a while. Uh, this be my, I guess, my second coming back video of what to carry when you are working private security as far as it goes with officer, armed guard work, or even law enforcement. And so right now I'm just giving you guys an overall look of what my duty belt looks like. And then at the, like towards the end of the video, I'm basically going to give you my gist of what can be added because there can always be something additional that any officer can utilize that would help benefit their job whenever a time comes when they need to utilize any of these equipment. So here we go. All right. So first off, when you're working any type of work, when it comes down to private security or law enforcement, you have to have some type of identifier of what and who you are. Uh, here's the first thing, it is security enforcement, okay? You gotta have a badge or a security shirt or something like that, you know? You can't just walk around with a duty belt, cargo pants, and a collared shirt, whether it is a polo or it is a uniformed shirt. So you have to identify who you are, okay? So security and or law enforcement would be great, okay? Number two, handcuffs. You need to have a pair of handcuffs, okay? Now, the handcuffs that I have here is, I can't really tell you what they were because I had these, uh, I got these in 2012. My old partner actually gave me these uh, when we went to a surplus store. And, you know, I've had them for so long, I've carried them pretty much everywhere with me when it came down to security or even uh, just off-duty type purposes. I've had these handcuffs for quite some time and they haven't rusted. And I've only used them once, you know, believe it or not. So, and uh, the only time I know that a lot of people will ask, well, security, you know, you're not supposed to use handcuffs, right? Well, no, you can put people in handcuffs. And the only time which you can, when you can put people in handcuffs, is say for an example, if a fight breaks out and in order to make sure that people do not continue to harm others, you or themselves, you have to detain them. You put them in handcuffs until you find out what the situation is. You talk to them, you pull them away from the other party, and then you assess the situation and see how you can go about next. So having a pair of handcuffs, you can never have any, you know, too many of them. Uh, this is a standard handcuff holder that came with the belt. And re believe it or not, the belt came with a lot of accessories. A lot of them I had to change because it just did not fit what I was bringing to uh you know, on duty. So, uh, this is just a regular nylon handcuff holder and I believe it can hold two handcuffs, but the way how the base kind of looks, yeah, I don't think so. So right now I just got one pair. I can always have more. This nylon baton holder actually, baton holder actually had, um, came with the belt as well, except for the baton. This is a 21 inch baton that I got online on Amazon. Very cheap. You can find these, uh, uh, anywhere between 10 to 30 to 40 bucks, you know, there's different companies that make them. Some even cost way more than that. And, you know, they have other features on it and stuff, but this one right here, it's a 21 inch. I don't want to extend it because I have to prod it into the ground really hard in order to make sure that it goes back in. And so, uh, this is, you know, it's, it's really great. I, I don't have any problems with it. And then my holster, first and foremost, we're going to take the firearm out. The weapon is clear. There is no round in the chamber and there is no magazine. The, cha the trigger has been compressed, okay? The holster that I got, I got it on Amazon. This is a Safari Land 6280 Level 2 holster. Uh, it has a hood on it so that we, therefore, no one can just simply draw out my holster from the rear. They just have to, you know, try to figure out how to work this. You can't just simply push it forward. You have to press down and release, I mean, and draw it forward. Um, so, you know, that's pretty much how that works. And my firearm. This is the Glock 17 Gen 3. Uh, this is a semi-automatic pistol, 9mm. And the flashlight that I have on here is the TLR1 Streamlight. It's a very good flashlight. And uh, a lot of departments generally have them. Or if not a lot of departments, then there are a lot of agencies that may have other flashlights and stuff like that. So, you know, this is a very great firearm, most reliable, and a lot of officers generally use it. Also, this is a radio pouch that came with the belt. Um, I haven't really utilized it much. And the only reason being is because when you're working armed security, sometimes nine times out of ten, you're by yourself. You're not with a large group of people unless you're protecting a large facility where it requires more than one officer to work. And even if you had to, you know, sometimes it even depends on a client. Maybe they want to keep in contact with you to make sure that things are okay or they need you to investigate something, you know, need you to go check out something and see what's going on, if there's a disturbance. And that's the best way instead of calling you on your cell phone and having your phone ring and then, you know, 
uh, if something was to happen, like if somebody was looking to do something, they hear your phone ring and then you pick it up and you know, blah, 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 blah. But it, it'll be the same thing if you had radio feedback. So no difference. Belt keepers. The, these did not come with the belt. Belt keepers are very, very good. I love belt keepers because whenever you work in armed security or law enforcement, you would generally have an additional belt that goes through the loops of your pants. And then you would have this as your outer belt. So, yes, you do want to have two belts on. Now, when you have this, uh, these belt keepers, basically you snap these on. You would shove these down through your inner belt up and outward to your outer belt. And then you would just clamp these together. And then what this does is that it creates from your it's, it, it helps you from, you know, you know, hacking up, pulling up your pants every five minutes or trying to adjust your belt because, you know, it creates a sloppy look for you to not have your belt aligned uh, with your inner belt or on your on your waist, I should say, your hips. And, you know, the belt keepers are very essential. I generally run four of them. There's an additional one right there that I like to kind of hide. And then there's another one over there. But and here's one right here, too. Now, uh, this right here is a. Pretty much, I keep a pair of latex gloves in here uh, for anything that you find, any type of evidence. You're digging through someone's pockets, you know, or not even someone's pockets. That's what you would want to have leather gloves for. I had a pair of leather gloves, and I left it in the last cruiser that I was in. That sucks. And then the person who was in there claimed to not have them, so maybe somebody else took them. Oh, well, it's just a gift that keeps on giving, I guess. But it's always essential to have some type of leather gloves on you because you don't know what type of situation you're dealing with, where there's a lot of blood, there's toxic, there's alcohol, there's drugs. You want to pick it up, and you don't want your hands on that uh, touching bear, whether your fingerprints get on it or so forth and so on. So you want to have, you know, um, some gloves. Silent key holder. I have used this once. <laughs> and when and the only reason being is because I like to dig through my pockets. I don't like having stuff like this out and just out and about, you know, and just dangling around. I just it feels weird when you're running or stuff like that to have keys dangling, swishing left and right. So I generally just, you know, it's there. And this came with a holster. I mean, with the belt as well, as well as this. OK. And it's also nylon. It's got like some type of padding, which is pretty awesome. Pepper spray. I have a Saber Red pepper spray. Uh, pepper spray is amazingly cheap. Uh, it's probably anywhere between ten to twenty dollars a can. Uh, sometimes you can get two for one. You can get um, you can get two pepper sprays in one big pack. That's what I got. I got an additional one right here in my pocket. Uh, in one of my pockets. Yep, right here that came with it. This is like a little keychain one that I generally like to keep. And yes, pepper spray does expire. So, um, yeah, this is basically what I have here. People are messaging me on Facebook. So, uh, and then also I have this came with it as well. Not the actual flashlight, but the flashlight holder. This is a flashlight that I seen on the commercial where a guy throws it out of a helicopter saying, oh, well, it still works. And, you know, this, this and that, the other, you can see it over a mile. And this guy's right. The flashlight here is the Pro 4 Tactical Light. And there's other models of this flashlight as well. And, you know, they make plenty of models of the flashlight by different companies, kind of like how you would look at a GMC Tahoe and then a Denali, you know, uh, not a GMC Tahoe, but a GMC the, so you, you get what I'm saying. The same truck, basically, just different look. And uh, I mean, same same look, same truck, different company, basically. And the flashlight is very bright. As you can see, it's daylight out. And it's got, let's see, it's got even a brighter flash. That's a brighter flash one. That's dimmer, dimmer, strobe light, and also an SOS feature. Wait, where did it go? Uh, okay. And then here's the SOS feature that comes with it. And believe it or not, I got this at the gas station just right behind my apartment complex and I got it for 10 bucks, you know, and it's really indestructible. You can't drop it from just by anything and not really worry too much about it. Okay. Last but not least, the triple mag holster by Safari land. This is a Kydex and I run three Glock 17 magazines uh, and I have plus two extensions on them. So instead of having the standard 17 rounds, I have 19 per mag. Um, and the ammunition that I run is blazer law enforcement rounds. I mean, Need a blazer. I don't know. I'm not really sure. Uh, probably should check. But I had these for a while. These are law enforcement grade defensive rounds, uh, hollow points. And they really are great. I've seen the ballistic reports on them. And then just for the last but not least, I have my my deadly ammunition. Um, I know I probably shouldn't have mixed ammo, but you know whatever it is, ammo's ammo. Whatever you can do to defend yourself, and you know to utilize this stuff, you have to be literally 
at the point where your life is in imminent danger to use your firearm. And that's really the only time that you can use your firearm uh, is if your life is in imminent danger. When somebody's coming after you with a knife or a sword or, you know, or another firearm. That is really the only time that you can utilize it. Because at that point, you have, you know, I got past words and, you know, you have to defend the one and only life that you have. <coughs> now, I know that some people are going to ask me, um, why is it that I run three magazines? Well, I do a lot of private security work in Detroit. And if, you know, no offense to the Detroit PD officers that are probably watching this, but the response time is very deplorable. And if I have to sit somewhere by myself and wait on police to come, uh, I'm going to be in the fight for my life. So not only do I have three magazines, but I have an additional uh, two and also keep uh, two boxes of ammunition on me just in case. I don't know what I'm going to get myself into. But that's the thing about working this type of work. You are always walking into an unknown. You know, whether you're doing uh, security work at a hotel, every single time that you open up a security, I mean, you open up a hotel door uh, to a house or a security room or something like, I mean, or a uh, hotel, it's like changing the channel on a TV. There's always something different per channel, you know, whether it's kids sitting down being polite, whether whether there's people having sex, whether there's people doing drugs, whether there's people just, I don't know, playing Foursquare, I guess, or whatever. Yes, I know, in a, in a hotel. It, it, it's happened. I got stories. So, <laughs> so you know, but things that you can add, uh, if you got the money, and this is only if you're coming out of pocket, or if not, it is a department issue. Um, tasers. Tasers run anywhere between, uh, I've seen them cheap. But I'm talking about ones that like a taser pistol can cost anywhere between four hundred dollars to about uh, about over a grand, really. And uh, I plan on getting one. It's like three to four hundred dollars. It's an actual pistol, a taser pistol, and I think it's called the M26, uh, not the X26, but the M26. And it's it's pretty cheap. It is a taser. You know, anything that would get me from not using that on someone. You know, if somebody's trying to fight me, I don't want to use my fist because uh, that's just something I don't want to do. Because if I need to draw my firearm out and I'm using my fist or grabbing pepper spray or something like that and I break my hand in the process or something like that, then, you know, I can't utilize my firearm if necessary. So I would, I would get a taser pistol. That's what I plan on getting. Uh, more handcuffs. You can never have enough. You can never have any more handcuffs. You know what I'm saying? Uh, reason being is because so let's say for example, if you are doing security at a party or something like that, and or you know a fight breaks out and you need to detain a large crowd of people, you know you're you're gonna be sitting there like, dude, I'm out of handcuffs or this, this, and that. So and not only that, you want to have those zippy those zippy tie cuffs as well. Uh, I keep some of those as well on my plate carrier, which I will be making a video of that yes, I have a plate carrier and I also have another vest that I wear on the outside. It's too bulky to wear on the inside of the shirt, so. But anyways, um, you can always add more stuff onto your duty belt. You know, just don't be overzealous. Have like five magazines on your duty belt. <laughs> you know, just keep some in like a go bag or in your cargo space if you have them in your pants pocket. If your pants even offer the cargo option. But anyways, this is just my duty belt, my EDC for what I usually have when I work in law enforcement or security work, which I don't wear to law enforcement, but para law enforcement, I should say, paramilitary work. And anyways, uh, security work. Um, this is everything I have. And I will be making more videos on what I got. So peace out. God bless. And have a great day.